All right, um, today we're going to be working on the codality problem brackets from lesson seven, stacks and queues. So here's the question. A string S consisting of N characters is considered to be properly nested if any of the following conditions are true. Um, so um, to put a, to shorten this, basically what we're looking for is to find out whether a string that can contain brackets as well as characters um, is a properly nested combination of brackets and we could have three types of brackets right so for every opening bracket we need a closing bracket in the proper order otherwise we return a zero and if it is a properly nested string of brackets we'll return a one all right so Let's say we get this string, put in, passed in, right? And S is our string. What we're going to need to do is iterate through it. And this is one of those fundamental coding problems uh, that if you took a coding class, you should have worked through already. However, uh, here's a warning. Just because you worked through it at one point doesn't mean that you shouldn't take your due diligence when solving it again, because oftentimes having worked through it a couple of years ago or maybe 10 years ago uh, will make us overconfident, but that also makes us more prone to making mistakes on simple things, right? So if you recall, uh, when solving this problem in your compiler class or your uh, basic programming class, you probably encountered this when learning about stacks, right? So let's say we have a stack, we'll call it st, um, and we're going to use that to keep track of brackets, right? So we'll have our string, and we'll have our pointer to the character in the string. When we encounter a bracket, push it into our stack, right? Then we go to the next, and we see it's not a mirror of the um, item we have in the stack already. When we get to the next element, so we insert it again. And go to the next element, it's um, not a mirror of the previous item in the stack. So then we go to the next element. And we do find a mirror so um, of the top element in the stack. So we pop it, and then we continue to iterate. Then we encounter an open bracket. we encounter a closing bracket once again. So we pop it. And looky here, now we have a stack. Our pointer is at an element that's in the stack that we encountered in the beginning. So we pop again. And finally, uh, we get to the last element, which is a mirror of the first character, and we uh, pop it. So basically, what we're seeing here is that at the end, if our stack has zero elements, it is a valid nested um, string. Otherwise, um, if it has greater than zero elements, it is invalid, right? And then we'll return a zero. If it's valid, we return a one. Are there any edge cases? So, yes, if we could have a string like so, which is an invalid string, and yet it would satisfy our uh, matching uh, pattern. So we have to make sure that we're the, we're looking at um, we have opening brackets. So if we encounter a closing bracket before an opening, a corresponding opening bracket, it's automatically invalid. So this would also be an invalid situation, right? 
Okay, so what are the steps that we're going to take to solve this? We'll be using a queue to track unpaired um, brackets when pair is found eliminate from the queue if at end queue is greater than zero return one zero else return one that's our steps right all right so let's start this so we have our queue which is basically an empty object or empty array and we'll have a function called is bracket and this will tell us if the current character we're on is a bracket right we'll also have a function is mirror and it'll tell us whether um, bracket one is a mirror of bracket two. All right. All right. So if bracket bracket two not includes character. else return false. So what includes does is check a string for a particular substring. So we're only passing in a character. So these are the different pairs of brackets. So if it's a bracket, we're going to we're going to look at it, right? And then we have our is mirror. Um, so bra bracket ones equal to that and bra bracket two is equal to that return true. And false. So we'll check for the different types of brackets. Okay, so we're always going to have this pattern. Um, we'll compare um, the top of the queue, which should always have an opening bracket, with the um, second bracket. If we don't have this pattern, um, we're going iterating through the queue. It's automatically an invalid sequence. And by invalid sequence, I mean something like this. right? All right, so now let's iterate through our string. Okay. So we'll have our queue. That can, we'll have a variable let curve top and that will equal the top of the queue. This one will have let curve char is equal to s of i. Right? So if um, if, so we'll check if it's a bracket because we want to ignore all non-bracket characters. Char is a bracket. All right. Then we'll run this, and we're going to check uh, for our special condition. Right, and that will be.
is mirror. I'm going to check if it's mirror. Curve top is mirror of curve char. Add it to the queue if it's not a mirror, right? So it is mirror. All right. So that's how we'll iterate through our queue. And then if q dot length greater than zero, return zero. Otherwise, return one. All right, so it says OK, and we can test an input. Let's test our invalid conditions. Return to value 0, so that looks right. Um, let's try this as well. So you should test additional edge cases and stuff, especially if you're tired, like I'm really tired right now. Because if you make a mistake, it'll tell you in your logic and when you're tired you're more likely to make mistakes right all right that's looking good so let us submit it see how it pans out Once again, this is one of those things you'll probably encounter in a programming class. Probably saw this when you were younger or uh, during school. So we got correctness of 100% and performance of 100%. So there we go. That is the brackets problem from Codality Stacks and Queues lesson.